set your faces to stunned because we're going to talk a lot of recruiting today. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? Whew, well, this is the recruiting week of the year, so I'm, I'm sort of, you know, I'm sort of buckled up. But, you know, sometimes you buckle up because you're about to go on a fun ride at Disney. I'm buckled up because, I, you know, I'm constantly worried we're about to crash right into a tree. And sometimes people tell you to buckle up and uh, your basketball team sucks. I'm talking to you, Avery Johnson. <laughs> um, anyway, um, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. <clears throat> Jimmy, I think let's um, – Let's talk recruiting first. I do want to talk Alabama, Memphis uh, at some point, um, but, but let's talk recruiting first. First of all, uh, Arian Carter um, committed to Tennessee today. It looked like for all the world for the longest time he was going to commit to Alabama. He was originally committed to Memphis, uh, linebacker out of Sierraville, Tennessee. Isn't that right? Um, very fast, got a sort of a Sunterreen Perkins vibe about him. Um but I watched this press conference today. I got some information last night that led me to believe, hey, we felt good about him again. I mean, it, it, we felt bad, then we felt good. I think here at the last minute, uh, obviously things sort of uh, went the wrong way, and he is committed to Tennessee. So not only did we not get him, we have to play against him, which is always a bad thing. Yeah, uh, and then he ends up at Tennessee as a double, uh, a double kick to the – to the groin, <laughs> frankly, because this is a kid I've thought all along would end up in the Alabama class. Uh, I've certainly projected Aaron Carter to be a part of this class, and then it, then it and it looked like he he officially visited Alabama and it went great over the weekend. So all the way I would say up through Monday of this week that it looked really good, and now it looks really orange because that's where he'll be. And uh, hey, it's twenty twenty two said this will be the craziest cycle of all time. I, I said, don't, you know, the only surprise is if there are no surprises, uh, don't be, you know, shocked at anything. So I need to follow my own advice. I'm not shocked. It's 2022. I think we know what happened, but I don't say that as some sort of insult or some sort of, you know, but because because Alabama's benefiting greatly in this NIL world. We're a winner, not a loser when it comes to that. But you don't get everybody you want. You know, I, it, it's not apples to apples, Luke. But one thing I want to stress to people is, you know, baseball has real free agency, right? And we all know the Yankees do have more money than everybody else. They, they do. It's not just because it's New York City and it's the Yankees and it's the Steinbrenner family. It's the Yes Network. The, the Yankees make more money from their local TV broadcast than any other team in baseball. And they pocket all that money. I mean, the Yankees... I believe own the network or at least have a piece of it, or I'm not sure how that works, but just think the Braves on uh Bali, Bali sports uh, are seen all over the South or in some markets, but uh, the New York city market, there's 21 million people uh, just in New York say nothing of the national audience that also has the yes network. So I'm just saying the Yankees have all the money in the world. They are famous for signing all the free agents, but do the Yankees sign all the free agents? No, they don't. They didn't sign Carlos Correa. They didn't sign Trey Turner. They didn't sign Scherzer or Justin Verlander. They didn't sign those guys. I mean, the Yankees don't sign everybody. Why in the world would anybody think Alabama could or would? I mean, it's impossible. Someone is going to get some of the players that you want. Uh, and so, you know, Aaron Carter's going to Tennessee and not Alabama, and that's a shame for, for us. Uh, but hey, it's a free it's a free market. It's a it's a, it's a free world, and uh, the kid's from Tennessee. And for all we knew, he grew up rooting for the Vols. For all we know, so uh, uh, you know, no Aaron Carter for Alabama. But Quay Russo, James Smith, I'm sure we're about to talk about those guys. Uh, the the linebacker store is not closed. Shoot, I've re muted myself again. I muted myself when I had John Garcia on the show. Uh, I mean, the only shoot, time shoot, shoot, rhyme. That's cool. Uh, first of all, 
Um, talking about your Major League Baseball comparison, I'm going to have to take your word for that because I don't like Major League Baseball. So I have no <laughs> idea if any of those things you said are true or untrue. Um, They're probably true, possibly true. But uh, regardless, yeah, Arian Carter, that one stings. It stings for me, especially having just seen Santorin Perkins at the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game uh, as I drooled over the prospects of his playing for Alabama. And look, you're right, the linebacker store is not closed. Um, but – I would love to have another dude like that. Um, and I think that is where we will probably go next with the Quay Rousseau, James Smith, and maybe yep. Damari Brown. We'll do that. We're going to do it in the next segment. Uh, in fact, I'm going to, I know this is a little bit uncouth. It's a little bit early, but I'm going to go ahead and tell everybody about betonline.net. Betonline.net is where you want to go to get that bet in. It is the site. It is so easy to navigate, so easy to pay in, so easy to get paid. Those are the two key factors. You can bet on whatever you want to. MMA, if you like Major League Baseball, you can bet on Major League Baseball when it's on. You can bet on college football, college basketball, pro football, pro basketball, whatever you want. Hockey, they, they got it. Do you want to bet on the World Cup? Uh, they, they got it. You want to bet on something else? They got it. Whatever you want. You can play poker. You can do all these very cool things at betonline.net. You know why? Because betonline is where the game starts. Yeah, Jimmy, I didn't want to get into the I, – I know Zach Blackerby may get on to me for ending that segment a little early, but, see, I didn't want to start talking about Quay Russo, James Smith, and Damari Brown and then, like, have to cut it off. So – I do know this as of, uh, what is it, Wednesday? It's Wednesday night. Um, Quay Rusaw and uh, Damari Brown are scheduled now to officially visit Auburn this weekend. Uh, Quay Rusaw and James Smith. Who did I say? You said Damari. Oh, I did. Sorry. Quay Rusaw and James mm -hmm. Smith. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, they're officially scheduled to visit Auburn. Um, is that – is it very concerning? No. Is it mildly concerning? Yes. Do I feel like uh, they will end up in the Auburn's class? I do not. Do, can things change? Certainly. Why am I talking with answering my own questions? I don't know. Maybe I've been reading too much Philip Marshall. That's just – maybe that's what I've been doing. I don't know. Regardless, uh, Jimmy, I'll let you uh, have the floor on uh, Ruson Smith. Yeah. Uh, I think the wrong attitude to have is the extremist attitudes, the, uh, oh, this means that they're, they're, you know, Auburn's getting the last chance. First of all, it's an unofficial visit, not an official visit, if that matters. They uh, never met Hugh Freeze in their lives in person until Wednesday. Uh, and then they'll, they'll meet him again for a second time, starting on the visit, I assume, Friday night. Um, I, I still believe Alabama will end up with Quay and James Smith. That's what I believe. Uh, I wouldn't say that if I didn't believe it. That's what I believe will happen. But like I said, the extremists are wrong. The extremists are, well, they're visiting Auburn at the end. It's it's over. It's over. This is all over. You're wrong. It's not over. Uh, those also on the other extreme that are like, this means nothing. This has been over for a long time. They're Alabama guys. They're going to sign with Alabama. This means nothing. You're wrong, too. Uh, you're, you're wrong not to worry. You should be. You should be. I bet you Alabama's coaches would two things express confidence and they're also going to worry. And that's sort of what I'm doing right here. Uh, I'm, I'm confident. I believe James Smith and Quay Russo will sign with Alabama next Wednesday. Uh, but am I nervous? I'd be crazy not to be nervous. I want them uh, badly as part of this class. I think they're great fits at Alabama. I think they're the fine sort of to me, Luke like the final pieces of the puzzle, like a, a puzzle you've been putting together all year long, putting the class together all year long, and now you're 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 two to three pieces short and and it, and it clears up the whole picture and it makes the picture look great. And and that's kind of how I see Quay and Jane, the final two pieces of the puzzle. Uh and, and if you don't get them, uh then the class is still fine. It's still good. I mean look where with class would be ranked, but it, it's an incomplete puzzle really without Quay and James in my mind, uh, particularly in a year where, where you're not signing Peter Woods and Kelby Collins and maybe a couple of others, uh, you know, AJ Harris. So um, I still think it's Alabama, but if you're not nervous, then uh, you should be. I mean, the coaches almost certainly are. Yeah. And, and look, these things change so quickly. Maybe they are locks for Alabama as of this minute, but uh I, again, I had very, very solid reason to believe that we felt good about Arian Carter last night, as late yeah. as last night. So, 
things exactly. change on a whim. Um, do I think they will end up in Alabama's class? I, I'd still maintain yes. Um, and I hope they do. And look, the need for a defensive lineman has never been greater for us, if you ask me. I mean, we whether or not we're missing on Kelby Collins or we just aren't getting Kelby Collins for another reason, uh, whatever you want to go there. We're, we missed on Peter Woods. Peter Woods is going to Clemson. Again, the reasons he may be going to Clemson don't matter. He's going to Clemson. Peter Woods, that dream is dead. Kelby Collins, I don't think that dream is dead, but I don't know that we're going to try and change that dream either. So I just – what I'm saying is I don't want to miss on Kelby Collins, Peter Woods, and James Smith, and Tamarian right. Parker. Tamarian Parker is also committed to Clemson. Uh, very good player out of Central Phoenix City that apparently we didn't pursue that heavily. Okay. I mean, I, again, it, you know, so what? But I don't want to miss on all four of the best defensive linemen in the state of Alabama this year. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's a loss, but, uh, you know, we have to we have to look at 2022 like it's the first year of the new rules, the first year of the new order. And I know myself going forward, I've always considered great in-state players a loss when we failed to land them. Now with NIL, it's not fair. I mean, this is a stupid example, but I think it's just the best way to describe it, Luke. Uh Let's say that we, we uh, there's a kid in 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 Hunts. Nah, let's 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 say more middle of the state. Let's say uh, there's a kid in uh, in and and let's say from Thompson, uh, and he, we we've recruited him since the ninth grade. We offered him in the tenth grade. We we have we have communicated with him every single time the rules allow. He loves us. He gets along great with his position coach. He's a perfect fit in our scheme on offense or defense. A perfect fit. We like him. He likes us. He likes the coach recruiting him. He likes the coach he'd be playing for. He likes the head coach. Everything has gone great. And the kid's like, you know, uh, hey, I'm signed with Alabama, and I know there's going to be some NIO money. And we're like, yeah, and this is the money. And, and the kid's like, that sounds awesome. And, wow, everything is perfect. And then a week before signing day, some school from somewhere else swoops in and says, uh, hey, we're giving you to, to play here five – times what you'll get at Alabama five times even if your NFL career doesn't take off because you get hurt or something you've still got this money we're, we're giving you life changing money and the kid and his family go oh, we can't turn that down I mean it's impossible to turn down that kind of money we got to take it I know you're disappointed you're not going to Alabama but you got to take it so the kid understandably takes the deal and takes the money at Alabama, what are we going to do? We're going to criticize our coaches? We're going to criticize them? And what if we say, what if Alabama's position as far as the money is, is, well, we could have done that and within the rules. We could have done that, but we're not going to pay that kid that much. That's not fiscally prudent to pay that kid that much because it would reset the market for the whole team. If I pay a freshman that much, now the actual starter at his position is going to go, Where's my two and a half million dollars? Where's mine? Because you can't you can't pay the kid that hadn't been here two and a half million, and I'm starting. Where's my two and a half million? So Alabama rightfully goes, you know, we're not going to pay that much. So my whole point is, we have to stop being so critical in this new world of when it doesn't work out. We don't know what all the facts are. We don't know what all the details are. We can't assume every time that Alabama doesn't sign someone that you want, that Alabama dropped the ball. You don't know that. Uh, so so it, it's, just, it's just the new world. It's, it's free agency is what it is. And this is just the – we've got to adjust to it. And, and, again, I'm not saying that's a real-world example of anything that has happened in this cycle. But that is the new world going forward. It doesn't mean that Alabama dropped the ball if a kid from inside the state chooses another place. Not anymore. You know, I'm glad you brought up that term because the original lyrics to Yay Alabama were, Yay Alabama, Crimson Tide, you're always fiscally prudent all the time. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> but they, they said this didn't catch it on. This didn't catch it on. We got to let that go. Fiscally prudent. Locked on fiscally prudent. Locked on prudence. 
That's I'm just saying a lot of us are pro sports fans. So if we're fans of pro teams, aren't we used to the fact that our team, even though they, they're worth a lot of money, make, they can't sign everybody we want. They can't sign all of them. It's not fiscally prudent. It's also not the Braves would like to re-sign the shortstop, Dansby Swanson, and they've offered him $20 million. And the Braves position is someone's about to pay him like $28 million. And we don't think he's worth that. Hey, I want him to re-sign Dansby too, but I get that. You can't overpay. Yeah, the Braves are like, we got fiscal prudence out to yin yang. We can't do that. Um, We're the most know. prudent. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jimmy, I wanted to add this in before we talk about the basketball game last night. Uh, so, one other thing I heard last night, again, I feel like this is from a very good place. I know it's from a very good place. And you and I have been um, – you and I have been pretty adamant that Bryce Young, Will Anderson, Brian Branch, Jordan Battle, they will all more than likely, in fact, it's very probable, sit out the bowl game. In fact, I think we've probably been like, yeah, they're going to sit out the bowl game. I mean, just deal with it. Some of our listeners have sort of clapped back at us a little bit saying, y'all don't know that. And that's true. That, that's totally true. Know. That's Nobody has announced it. And then something happened. Last night I heard this, and I heard it again from a good place, that Bryce Young might play. And he might play not because he's worried like, oh, no, if I don't play, the, the GMs might not draft me number one. He might play because he loves the University of Alabama and he loves his teammates and he doesn't want to leave them hanging. And that was the explanation I got. And I my, my fiscally prudent self says – because we fiscally are locked on fiscally prudent. This makes no sense because, first of all, we live in a day and time. 20 years ago, everybody would be shooting, you know, Bryce Young birds and saying, you don't care about us, whatever. Now we're all enlightened enough to go, yeah, we get it because you don't want to hurt yourself and you're about to make generational money. So now this is going the other way. I'm like, Bryce, I, I don't want you to get hurt, bro. But if you want to play, I'm all for it because here's my thing. I'm scared. I, I'm sad. I'm sad daily. By I'm saddened by the fact that I don't get to see Bryce Young play in an Alabama uniform anymore. So to get him to see him do it one more time, please, eight pounds, six ounce baby Jesus. Yes, I want it. Yes, but I, I would love to see it. That's me being self. But see, I understand that's me being selfish. I'm I'm totally me being selfish. Now if he does it, I think he goes down as maybe the legend of all legends. I mean, because in this day and time, it would be almost unheard of. But, hey, if he wants to do it, I'm here for it. And at the same time, I'm not going to be mad if any of the other guys decide to sit out still. I get it. Just because if, if Will Anderson says, you know, Bryce, I think that's cool for you, but I better sit out, I'm cool with that. But what if Bryce plays and Will Anderson plays? Oh, goodness. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to take a downer. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, I've been uh, predicting that Bryce would opt out and that Will would opt out. That's what I've been predicting. And uh yeah, uh thanks to uh some 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 whispers, maybe maybe I'm coming off that now. And 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 you know, when I consider the other, the, the other side of the coin, the fact that he might play, that Bryce might play, uh also can't help but think, you know, Maybe what I was underestimating was Bryce himself in terms of his competitive nature and how much fun he has. You know, you see Bryce two facial features when he plays football. There's the serious Bryce, who's obviously, you know, two-minute drill Bryce, the two-minute drill, locked in, locked in, poised as all get out, but locked in. The other face we see when Bryce plays football is smiling Bryce. Bryce having fun. Bryce has fun playing football. And I can't help but think that even though he would be risking the generational money that's staring at him being the potential first pick in the draft, I can't help think but this Saturday when Alabama plays Gonzaga in basketball, that the old point guard Bryce, who literally was a point guard, if Nate Oates said, Bryce, I need you to run. I need you to run the point. We're playing Gonzaga Saturday, and I need you out there. Uh, you know, and he rolls the ball to the middle of the floor. I think Bryce is diving on that ball. And I think Bryce is going to be a point guard for Alabama basketball against Gonzaga on Saturday. And maybe that's what I've been underestimating because 
Bryce has fun when he plays football. He said fun playing for Alabama. I heard him say in his own words, he's eternally grateful to Alabama for what Alabama's done for him. And uh, I, I, I'm 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 back. I'm I'm with those who criticized us for assuming too much too early. And uh, I now say uh, there's a 55 percent chance we'll see Bryce against Kansas State. And if Bryce plays, <laughs> if Bryce plays, I think Will will play. I mean, even if Will is like leaning against it, and now Bryce is going to play, I think Will's like, yeah. "Oh man, man, all right." He'd be like, "Damn it, Bryce, you're making me play." <laughs> now I got to play. Now I got. Oh. Hey, and uh, credit to one of my buddies that I won't name, but he made a good point to me uh, when we were talking about this very subject. Uh, he said, "You know, captains play. You can opt out, but captains play." And uh, Bryce and Will are our ultimate captains. And uh, yeah, now I'm saying 55 percent chance they play, and if they don't, like you, so. Put so well, hey, that that's fine too. I, I I totally get it. Jimmy, I need now to tell everybody about uh, the National Highway Transportation Safety Association and their drive sober or get pulled over initiative. So look here, you're hanging out with some friends and you're putting back a few drinks. A few becomes too many. And as the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride, maybe getting an Uber or whatever. Nah, you got this. You live nearby. It's no big deal. You want to come get your car in the morning, whatever. What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway, right? And even so, what's the worst that can happen? Your insurance go up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You tow to your car. Or maybe you kill yourself or somebody else. Everyone knows about the risk of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's life forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. All right, Jimmy, uh, last night, the Alabama Crimson Tide basketball unit defeated the Fighting Tigers from Memphis uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, right there in Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa. They actually held Memphis without a three-pointer until the literally the very last shot of the game. Um, yeah. There were a lot of moments where this team looked young to me. Uh, the, the, for instance, Alabama would get up by five or six or seven and they would have the ball and you'd say, okay, this is the moment they're going to pull away. Alabama. Clearly I thought Alabama was the more talented of the two teams. I thought Memphis was the more experienced of the two teams clearly. And I obviously by, by definition, because I think most of Memphis's players had a nine to five job to get up for the next morning. They're so old. Um, but uh, anyway, so every time I thought Alabama was going to pull away, they would have a turnover. They would take a bad shot. Memphis would get a steal. They'd get a bucket. And all of a sudden, it was back to three or back to two or back to four. And, it, you know, there's a huge difference. This is going to sound stupid, but I think if people who know basketball will agree with me. Um, it, there's a huge difference between being up five and up seven. Seven, I mean, five, you're like, hey, two possessions, we got this mother. Seven is three possessions. Three possessions. And, and, and in football, it's sort of like 14 versus 17. If you get to 17, you're like, it's going to be tough. I don't care what you do. It's going to be tough to come back. I mean, you got, you've got to score three straight times, and you can't let us score at all. And when you're up seven with about however many minutes left, you feel like, okay, this deal's done. Well, Alabama, in typical Alabama fashion, sort of let Memphis come back a little bit. And they they had a – I guess theoretically they had a shot at the end, but Alabama held them off. That A lot of that I attribute to Alabama's youth. But here's the thing. They still won. And, and that is what matters. They still won. They put it together. Brandon Miller was having a very subpar game for the first quarter of that contest. And then he started doing Brandon Miller things, and you look up and he's got 24 points and nine rebounds, and you're like, what the world? I didn't know he had that many points and rebounds. He's the one that hit the big three-pointer when I think it was 57 all. Memphis had come back to tie it. Brandon Miller hits the three-pointer, and that just sort of – Alabama never really looked back from that point forward. Um, Noah Clowney – look, I don't even know why Noah Clowney plays anymore. We should just say, Noah Clowney, let's just all pretend like Noah Clowney's going to get 16 points and 11 rebounds. 
Because that's what it seems like he does every game. Let's just do that, and we don't even have to play it. You know, we can just put it in the box score. Um, Mark Sears still playing very, very tough. Javon Quinterly still, you know, not not 100%, you can tell. And then Namari Burnett, we, of course, we find out. You know, this is, you were talking about a typical Alabama thing. Right as we're about to play Memphis after the biggest win of the year, the biggest win in college basketball in the year, we find out that our best defender – is out six to eight weeks, and Memphis gets a dude back from NCAA purgatory. We lose a guy, they get a guy. You know? <laughs> Didn't matter. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. No, I, what, what a great win. What a great win. And, uh, hey, you know, we, we could do the whole show on it, but I, I'll just sum it up by not even talking about that game, talking about the next game. And this, this, is, where, this is where Nate Oates has brought Alabama. Uh, Luke, wouldn't you agree – that one year ago, literally a little more than a year ago now, Alabama played Gonzaga out in Seattle uh, with a young team and 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 was an underdog, of course. And I think the best word is surprised uh, Gonzaga and surprised this country. And it was an upset. And it was just a surprise that Alabama beat Gonzaga a year ago. And this Saturday, Alabama plays Gonzaga again, uh, and Gonzaga re- returned Drew Timmy. Uh, they have a lot of dudes. They are a team, once again, capable of winning the NCAA National Championship. That's how good the Zags are, as usual. And this year, it's going to be a surprise if Alabama doesn't win. I mean, that's that's how well the team is playing. That's where Nate Oates has put Alabama. It's not even a surprise if Alabama beats Gonzaga this year. Uh, and and boy, who would have who would have said that in March when Alabama wasn't playing well this past March, Luke? And a lot of the fans were frustrated. And a lot of the fans were kind of losing it on the team for looking mediocre down the stretch. What if I'd said during the midst of that free fall, uh, we're going to play Gonzaga next December, and we will be surprised if Gonzaga manages to win that game against Alabama. I mean, that, that's where Nate has put this team after just 10 games, uh, clearly among the nation's elite teams, capable of beating anybody, anywhere, any place, and, and doing it despite being shorthanded, despite being even more shorthanded. Now you got Dom Welch out. You got Namari Burnett out. Now we're down to 10 guys. And the 10th guy's Nick Pringle. He hasn't played a lot of minutes. The ninth guy's Darius Miles. He hasn't played many minutes. He plays last night. He's one of the reasons you win the game. And the eighth um, guy's coming off ACL surgery. So um, there you have it. So and 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 Alabama is. I hate as soon as I, I say this, the game will go sideways, and y'all could all blame me for the loss. So I hate saying this, Luke, but uh, I think Alabama's better than Gonzaga. See, wasn't that a shocking thing to say? I mean, dead, dead, understandable, dead silence. Well, you're muted, but understandable, dead silence. You're still muted. I'm sure you're cussing me out, and that's why you're muted. You're muted because I'm still muted. I didn't out, know I was still muted. <laughs> you're muted that whole time that you were cussing me out for saying Alabama's better than Gonzaga and ruining the game. Because I'm sure that was all really funny. I hate that we missed that. I I had to mute it or the FCC was going to do it. Um, All right, buddy, that's going to do it for this podcast. We will catch you guys next time. Until then, roll tide. Roll tide.